Let's stand. Father, we give you praise and honor and glory for this day, for this opportunity to be together with you. We submit ourselves to you, Father. We submit this day to you, this time together with you. We submit it to you, Jesus. We submit it to you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Si bakoto ti e kularararabata haya. Thank you, Father. 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 Alo roto lo roto mo kora ta ta hai ala ra ta ta basi. lo lo roto to lo ro 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 mo kora ta ta. Ye lo ro 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 mo kora ta hai. Ye la ba hai sa ta 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 ba ba hai. Yelorororororoboko <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. God bless you. Tonight is going to be a little different. Um, I've been dealing with practical stuff and... Uh, comparing things we have taught and practiced uh, with what the scripture is actually talking about. But tonight's different. And some of you will have heard me talk about some of this in various degrees and ways. But uh, what I am sensing Right now, is I'm going to be allowed or directed to deal with this subject in a in a way I've never been permitted to do before. Um, I've always appreciated coming here, especially to uh, Tabernacle of Joy and Joy Fellowship, because. Uh, you have an ability uh, to be ministered to at a depth that many are not able to receive. And the, the thing about that that's difficult to get across to you is you have no point of reference Okay. You have no point of reference, so you don't understand, relatively speaking, how deep a speaker is capable of going here with the sense that you are able to stay with it and not be overwhelmed and 
whatever. Those of you that are delegates, uh, again, as I said the very first session, I'm weird. Um, I prefer the smaller crowd than the bigger crowd, and I, I trust the Lord to prevent people from coming who are not able to go where it's the will of God for us to go. I don't pray for be the Lord to make a way for people to get to a meeting. I'm trusting him to hinder people from coming who are not able to go where he's wanting to lead us to go. 6,000 demons in a man could not keep him from Christ. No amount of sinners can hinder a church service. But one carnal saint that has the Holy Ghost or cl claims the Holy Ghost has had the Holy Ghost who doesn't want what God's trying to give and do can significantly limit the meeting for everybody. That may be hard to believe, accept, receive, but it's absolutely the truth. Now, the difficulty for us in this meeting, and people will be coming in, so I'll have to say this again sometime tonight, is uh, what the Lord appears to be doing is the, the meeting is sequential. So whether, it doesn't matter day or night session. Each session is sequential. So that means you're going to, in order to fully receive what God is doing in this meeting, you're going to have to at some point go back and watch each of the sessions in order. You can't just go watch the stuff you missed because there is a sequence to it. And uh, that's important. It's like if we were building a house, and let's be real basic here, a house is, consists of foundation and walls and a roof and electrical and plumbing and uh, some kind of HVAC, whatever. You can't put in the foundation, put in the walls, put on the roof and start painting and decide, oh, I got to go back and put in the electrical. I'll just go back and put in the electrical. Sorry, you've already closed the walls in. They're ready to be painted. It doesn't work like that. So it's necessary to understand you got to go back and, and, and let the Lord build the house again in the sequence in which he did it. And plus, when the Lord is communicating like he's doing in this meeting, uh, it's important to understand that you will, none of us are capable of receiving everything the Lord is doing and saying the first time through this. And it is not an accident that the Lord has allowed and facilitated man in developing technologies in the last 30 to 50 years that were not available in the entire history of man. So whenever God would move in the past, years ago, if you weren't there to hear it and you weren't paying attention, you missed it. And even if the Lord enabled someone to write it down for you to read later, which we call the Bible, you're still not going to get the full impact of being there when it was spoken. But the Lord is so intent that this generation be able to receive what he's doing and hear what he's saying, that he has facilitated man in coming up with technologies 
that allow us to hear a word over and over and over again so that we fully absorb everything that the Lord is doing and saying. Praise God. Now, the fact that man takes those technologies and use those for any other kind of purpose, that's not God's problem. And if you think man would have come up with all that stuff by themselves, who in the world could have ever imagined that a voice could be brought, brought, transmitted along a line of wire? How? Or that you could make tiny impressions in a plastic dish, disc, and if you had a needle that you'd put in the grooves of those discs, that it would vibrate that needle to a certain degree, that if you amplified that vibration, it would be music and speech. Who in the world ever, ever thought of being able to do that? So man just, I think I'm going to make this plastic dish, disc and put little vibrations on it and it'll make sound and music. Really? You think man came up with that by himself? So my point of all this rambling is that uh, the Lord has is so intent that this generation get what he's doing and saying. He's made it possible where you can watch it over and over and over and over again. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually it was the first Sunday of February, which is two weeks ago now, I preached, David uh, was in England, and so I preached Sunday morning and Sunday night in Arnold, and so far right now, Arnold is the only place we're able to stream live what we're doing with the other places recording it and putting it online uh, because, well, a lot of reasons. But to, uh, So I, I preached, and the message, the Sunday night message was when someday becomes today. And I posted that this was one of the most significant words God has ever given me, and you needed to watch that. And so I, I hadn't had a chance on uh, Monday, just kind of half awake, half asleep, trying to still adjust to the time change. I started watching it. And uh, when you hear and repeat and you're just being a conduit, you have no way to truly experience how powerful a word is that God is speaking because you're not doing the speaking. You're just hearing and repeating, hearing and repeating. And so I, I wanted to go back, and I knew, as I, I knew the flow I had. I recognized the flow I had as I was speaking, on that subject, and uh, I had never really studied it, but the, uh, a couple of days before, the Lord said, it's one thing to have faith for the promises of God to come past someday, but what happens when it's now today and God's ready to do what he promised today? It's not the same thing. It's a big transition from believing someday and believing today. And just in a few moments' time, the Lord just just made it. I can show you the notes in the yellow notepad app. Just put down a few things, and I, I really hadn't had an opportunity to study it in depth or look through it. So uh, he said, do it. And so I just started flowing and didn't know how, what I was going to do. And after I watched it again, I'm thinking, oh, Jesus. This is one of the most significant words for our day. It's a very significant word. 
And I thought again to myself how awesome it is that a word like that, God's word, the, forget the vessel, the instrument, whose voice is God's using, just the word, uh, just hearing that word, how awesome it is that the Lord's made it possible where people, anyone that wanted to could receive that word. And so I am encouraging you, I'm encouraging you. Uh, this meeting, if I can be so, appear to be forward, what I am personally feeling, me, knowing what the Lord did and did not do in directing me in advance, it really reminds me of March 2011 when we came here expecting to do one thing and the Holy Ghost just took it, went someplace completely different in a completely different perspective and impact. And uh, I am in dumbfounded amazement how the Lord is laying this out line upon line Precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, because he is, this is not just going to affect you, but hungry people throughout the world are going to be able to go to YouTube and hear what God is saying to transform their lives, their prayer lives. So, because you're being trusted to hear it firsthand, you need to understand the significance of that and make sure you're faithful to that. What a beautiful, sweet, powerful, wonderful move of God here today. The way the Lord moved in here and confirmed his word and then began to, to deal with our hearts. And so, with all of that introduction, um, huh. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1. It is impossible to cover this to the depth that uh, my myself, that I would love to cover this. You don't have the time, and I don't have the strength. Even though the Lord could give me the strength, it's just not possible. There is no way to truly plumb the depth of this, so... I can only allow the Holy Ghost to take each part of this to the depth that it needs to go. Suffice it to say that Paul, in speaking to the church at Ephesus, was trying to bring to them an understanding of who we are, what we're doing here, and what God is doing for, to, and through us. What are we doing here? <clears throat> Why are we here? I said it last night. I'm saying it to you again today. I said it today again. I'm saying it to this evening. The thing that would enable you to cast your care and trust the Father is to become absolutely convinced that he has a plan He's not doing any of this on the fly. He's not just randomly deciding to do this, that, the other. That there was a plan before the first thing was brought into existence. 
a plan that he is going to bring to pass. So I'm reading, <clears throat> Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. I mean, right there, okay. Here's a man raised a Jew, a zealous Jew, who believed the Christians were blaspheming God. And was of such notoriety that the chief priests and the elders gave him special authority to go throughout all of that region and persecute Christians, having them locked up and some executed. And yet, Paul said, I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. If you look at only my story and my history, you'd think impossible. It's never, it couldn't possibly come to pass. But God had a way. God had a way. I don't mean to be offensive, brother, but you're from Bolivia? Columb I knew that. You said Columbia. Columbia. You're from Colombia, living in China. Huh? <laughs> really? I mean, really? You see, if I don't fight God... And let him be God. Right. He has a way to get his will done. The question is, are you going to be yielded or are you going to resist? Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and according to Greek, uh, the Greek grammar, Sharp's rule of syntax, the word and here in this verse should be more properly translated by the word even, not the cumulative word and, but the word even meaning comparing God our Father to being identical to the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be to you and, and peace from God our Father and or even from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. <clears throat> this communicates a done deal. Accomplished, finished right. from God's perspective. Right. Heard a man of God say many years ago that when we get to heaven, <clears throat> and he's speaking figuratively, of course, just to make a point, and we walk through heaven's warehouses of all the things that God would have done still sitting on the shelves, unused. Because we never had the faith to let him do those things through us. He's already stocked heaven's shelves with all the blessings you need to do everything he's called you to do. You just have to be positioned in your relationship with God and your faith to be able to believe that and take advantage of all of that, not for your benefit or glory, but for the kingdom's sake. For all who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him, listen now, before the foundation 
of the world. And what do we normally do? We read a, ver a statement like that. We just slide right on by because that is incomprehensible. What, is, what does he mean by that? That means <laughs> that God planned all of this before he created the first thing. Some of you may have heard me talk about this, but you get to do it again because I get to talk about this. And it may very well be my favorite thing to talk about at this point in my life. I'm sitting at my desk in September of 09. No, not 09, 13. September 2013. I'm studying and preparing for Call to War 2013, which at that time was in, October, in November. And I, I, I'm just, I'm studying the scripture and I'm seeking God. I'm sitting at the computer and I'm praying and, and I, I've got my, my word processor open. I've got my Bible software open and, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm going wherever the Lord's taking me and I'm making notes and I'm saying, Lord... I really would like to understand all this warfare stuff. What about the war in heaven and how did the earth get in the condition it was in? Because in the beginning God created the heaven and earth and in verse 2 of Genesis 1 says, and the earth was out without form and void. And if you know anything about God, you study any way God does stuff, he didn't create it. Like it is in verse 2. He created it in perfect order as it is in verse 1. So what happened to get the earth the way it was created to the condition it was in in verse 2? What happened, God? What happened here? And he says to me, if you want to understand the future, you got to understand the past. And I said, he, we, he and I have a conversation. And I said, how far back are we talking about? He says, how far back do you want to understand? And I said, are you challenging me? Silence. I said, okay, who are you? And where'd you come from? Is that far enough back for you? I didn't have a bad attitude or whatever. He didn't rebuke me for that. All he, said, all he did when I said that was, he quoted Psalms 90 and verse 2 to me. From everlasting. Before the foundation, before the mountains were brought forth or ever Thou hast formed the earth and the world. And depending on who you read and you study the Hebrew words there, the earth and the universe. Before you did any of this, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. And that's what he said to me. From everlasting to everlasting, I'm God. I went, whoa, I, I've never thought of this before because we apostolics, our, our, our Godhead doctrine is taught from the perspective of the anti-trinity. We understand God from the perspective of He's not the Trinity. You get, and then all of a sudden it made sense to me. If you know who God was before all this was formed, you don't even have to talk about the Trinity. Because you get to, from, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. 
Now you tell me how many beings there can be that can fill all space. There can't be three. There can't be two. There can only be one. Trinity? What's that? And the Lord said, What's my name? Well, Jesus. No. You haven't gone far enough back yet. What's my name? Father. No. Father implies something's been brought into existence. You haven't gone far enough back yet. What's my name? I am. Not we are. I am. I am. Okay. Now we're back there. There's nothing else but God. Nothing but God. <laughs> Ooh, praise God. There's nothing back there but God. Nothing. What did he need all this for? Was he bored? What did he need to do all this for? He's God. He's got no trouble to deal with. He's got no problems. He's got nobody questioning who he is. He's self-sufficient. He is the self that one. He's the self-existent one. He doesn't need anything. Doesn't need anybody. He is God. He is I am But God had a problem. The Bible says God is love. He didn't just start being love. He wasn't just love at creation. He's God. He can't change. Whatever he is now, he's always been. So what do you do if you're the I am God... And the most descriptive term for you is not power and might and authority and wisdom and knowledge and holiness, and, but it's love. What do you do when you are love, but there's only you? Well... You can't love yourself because loving yourself doesn't satisfy love. <laughs> the old statement is love is what you give, not what you get. So if he's love and there's nobody but him, how does he love? Oh, you. <laughs> I wish I could go slow enough to give you the opportunity to think about these things while I'm teaching, but I don't have that opportunity. And so the hunger, hungry are going to get this and listen to it over and over again and go back to the book and look at this stuff in the book and then listen again because this makes the difference. Man looks at the world. And sees how messed up it is. <laughs> Man looks at the world and sees how messed up it is. And says, how can God be a good God, a God of love with the world and the condition it's in? Easy. Love requires a choice on both ends. You 
You can't love that which can't choose to love you back. That's why you will never find a verse in the Bible where it says God loves the universe. It has no choice. You will also find no verse in the Bible that says God loves the angels. They had no choice. Oh, because they were created of spirit substance and God has choice. They were created with the power to choose, the ability to choose, but they weren't given the right to choose. Because God never intended to have a relationship of love with the angels. That's why when Lucifer presumed to make a choice, when he had no right to choose, he was done. There was no forgiveness, no redemption, finished forever. So God, in his desire to fully be manifested as God, God is love. decided he had to create an entire environment in which he could create beings like himself who had the power to choose and the, the right to choose and the obligation to choose so that he could love them and they could complete the cycle and love him in return. Problem. You're the I am. You feel everything. We can't even describe him as infinite because the word infinite means you feel all time and all space. And you can't define the I am by time and space because even if you say he fills all time and space, that's still limiting the I am and you can't limit the I am. So he is more than infinite. The infinite dwells in the I am. So here's the problem. You're the I am. There's no time in you. There's no space in you. But you need a being created that can choose. But that being can't be you because there can only be one of you because there's only one God. There's only one I am. There can't be more than one I am. So that means... This being he's going to create can't be God because you can't create a God. The God isn't created. He's the self-existent one. Before there was a beginning, he was there. After the ending, he's there. He's not the I was, the I is, and I will be. I is. Did you get that? I am. He's not the I was, I is, and I, I will be. He's the I am. There's no past, present, and future tense in him. He can only be the I am. So how does he relate to time and space, which is the environment he's got to create to put this being in, because this being making a choice Choice is a function of time. Choice means, <laughs> choice means I hadn't chosen, but now I do choose. Time. So man, that God 
is the only thing God created with the ability to choose and the right and responsibility to choose could only be a part of time because choice is a function of time. How does the I am God pull that off? He can't. So what did the I am God do? He became something else. He became the firstborn of all creation. And who and what is that firstborn of all creation? Logos. Because Logos is the I am God. In his ability to relate to time and space. And folks, the only part of the I am God you and I will ever know is the Logos. Because time, creatures of time and space cannot ever will never directly relate with the I am. So the Logos became the mediator. The Logos became the interface between the I am and time and space. Well, that's a second person of God. No, it's not at all. The Logos proceeds from God because it is the I, He is the I am God expressed. Oh, I told you that we had a problem here. I'm so far. <laughs> oh, this is, this is good because it's a lot deeper than I was going to go or thought I could. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Listen to this. God, who at sundry times and diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. If you got a King James Bible in front of you, if it's a, if it's a reliable copy, whether printed or electronic, the word his, his Son, his, is in italics. What does that mean? The translators were being honest enough to let you know. The word his is not in the original language. They supplied it because they thought it should be there. And the rule of italicized words is this. If the verse means exactly the same thing and says exactly the same thing with the italicized word in it as it does without the italicized word, it's okay to leave the italicized word because it hasn't changed the word. But when you leave it in, if it says something different than it says, but with it out it being in there, you can't leave it in because it changed the word. Well, what's the big deal? It's just the word his. No, you missed the point. He's trying to communicate the means, the agency by which the I am communicated with his creature, man. And that agency is son. Not his son, son. Because in this context, in this context, there's only ever been one of them. And since he was created by the I am, he is by default his. But that's not the point of the verse. The point of the verse is, this is the means, the agency, by which the I am who cannot be limited by or defined by time and space, relates to or communicates with that which is time and space. Because who is the Son? In the beginning was the Logos. And the Logos was with God. 
And the Logos was God. John 1, 1. But John 1, 14 says, And the Logos was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld the glory as of the, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Logos clothed in flesh for the sake of redeeming mankind is Son, or also called Christ. So, he says, hath in these last days spoken unto us by Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all th things, listen now, by whom also he made the worlds. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and, with, and without him not anything was made that was made. Meaning the Logos, excuse me, the I Am created nothing himself. Because I am. If he directly creates, he ceases to be the I am. Because in order to bring something into existence that's defined by time and space, he would cease to be I am. So by becoming Logos and doing everything through Logos, he stays the I am. Why did he do all this? Love. 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 Oh, let's keep reading. Next verse. Who being the brightness of his glory. Who? Son. Christ. Logos made flesh. Who being the brightness of his glory. And the express image of his person. And upholding all things by the word of his power when he had made him, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down to the right hand of the majesty on high. Now I want you to get this here, okay? I want you to hear this right here. The only way that time and space can experience the I am is through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Logos made flesh, or the only part of the I am that can be made visible to the universe. That's why he was called the express image of his person. Because the Logos made flesh is the I am making the only part of him that can relate to time and space visible for all mankind. And when you and I get to heaven, if you're expecting to see I am, excuse the language, it ain't going to happen. We will never see the I am. The only place we will ever see the I am is through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ who is the visible representation of the I am God forever and ever. Amen. Verse 4. Being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Five, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a, to me a son. Now, <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> the I am changed in the only way he could change. 
when he became the father by bringing the logos into existence. <laughs> and hear me. The logos, the Bible says concerning the logos that the I am loved him. That's why he's also called the beloved. So first and foremost, the I am who is love has always been love, will always be love. First was able to express himself as love because he was able to love the logos that he brought into existence. And we're thinking, well, you're, you're talking about two now. You're not, you talk, no, no. The logos is not a separate person or being from the I am. He's just all of the I am possible that was made rel relative to or able to relate to time and space. It's not a different God. He's not a different person of God. He's a different expression of the I am. The only means whereby the I am could relate to time and space. Because otherwise, when you, when you bring time into existence, now you have past, present, and future. And the I am would cease to be I am. Now, <laughs> Revelation chapter 1. Let's read a little bit. Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. I'm going to read pretty fast here if you don't mind until I get to the spot I want to go to. Ready? Revelation, Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by, the, by his angel unto his servant, John. Next verse. Who bear record of the word, the logos of God, and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. John to the seven churches. Listen now. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace be unto you and peace from him which is, which was, which is to come. Now, that is one of the most unsubtle, if there's such a word, clues you'll ever get to who this is talking about. When he said, from him which is, which was, and which is to come, he can't be talking about the I am. Because the I am can't be is, was, and is to come. So who is he talking about? The Logos made flesh. That's why this is the revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave to him. How can that be? Because Jesus acknowledged in his humanity when he walked on the face of the earth. He didn't even know the time of his own coming. Only the Father knows that knew that. The I am is the only one that knows that. Or at least before Jesus ascended. Again, we shout, that's two. That's two at least. There's got to be a third because we believed in three all these years. It's not two. It's two, dimension, two different dimensions of God. The I am who cannot in any way directly relate to time and space. And the I am's means whereby he could relate Time and space and creation and man. And why did all this happen? Love. And it was all planned before the foundation of the earth. And Peter says in the middle of a storm, Jesus, don't you care we're about to perish? Wait, 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 wait. He's talking to the I am expressed as logos 
robed in flesh, walking on the earth. And he's implying that he didn't know there was a storm coming and that they could potentially die. And he didn't even care about it. The point I'm making to you is this. If you get this revelation, you will understand why you don't ever need to pray about a need personally again the rest of your life. All you do is cast the cares. Because how can this God not be totally aware of everything and have a plan for everything no matter where I am right now? It's appointed unto man wants to die. Hear me. I can't die before my appointment. Jesus knew he was going to hang on the cross and die. So when they took up stones to stone him, he just walked through their midst. They didn't even see him. Because it wasn't time yet. Jesus said, don't fear him that can destroy the body. I say unto you, Fear him that can destroy body and soul in hell. Perfect love casts out all fear. Fear's got torment. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Is your scuba gear working? Because we've gone to some depth so far. Are you ready to go back to the surface or you want to keep on swimming down here? Huh? Uh, is your mind just going, uh? Are you, are you going, hey, hey, I w I've always wondered about that. That's why I'm saying to you like I did last night. Yesterday, Sunday, and this is about having church. That's what defines us. That's who we are. It's just a bunch of people trying to have good church when we're the plan of the I am God. His plan is to have a bunch of people just trying to have church. I mean, that's the greatest expression of our revelation of this God is church services. Do they have a place? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they got a place, not the place. Because we've replaced serving and worshiping and fellowshipping with the God to heaven and participating in church services whether he's there or not and going through ritualistic prayers whether he's being communicated with or not. Oh, man loves religion. Throw your virgin or your, your baby daughter or your virgin daughter into the volcano and let's appease the volcano god. Into the Congo River, they throw their baby girls into the river for the crocodiles to eat to appease the crocodile god. Let's throw something to our angry god so he'll, they'll, he or they will leave us alone and we can live in peace because that's all religion can do is appease an angry God so that he doesn't punish us. And you think we're all that different from that? So you think we dress holy to appease an angry God? We come to church to keep from God being angry with us? We pay our tithes and live holy so that God doesn't Get angry with us. 
We pray so that he doesn't get angry with us. Is that what this is all about? Because that's what religion does. What about the I am God? <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 4. I'm going to start with verse 1 and read quick, if you don't mind. <laughs> Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but my manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, what's our gospel? Is it some doctrine? No. It's the good news that the I am God expressed himself as Logos, created man and then caused that logos to be robed in flesh to be able to have a relationship with his creation that's the good news and so how do I apply that good news to my life so I become a partaker of it I have to be born again or I have to experience the death burial or resurrection of Jesus Christ through repentance of water baptism in Jesus name receiving the Holy Ghost but the good news is not the plan of salvation the good news is the I am God wants to know me and wants me to know him and he died so that all of my sins which become a hindrance to that relationship can be taken away so the question I have to determine is and God wants me to know this more than I'll ever want to know it is by what means do I take care of all those things that are hindrances to me knowing him and him knowing me we call that the plan of salvation but it's not the gospel the gospel is the good news. The I am wants to love you through his agency, Logos. Oh, let's see if this actually says that. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Next verse. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Next verse. For we preach not ourselves, nor our church, nor our denomination. But we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Listen now, here you go. Ready? For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ forever. 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 Hey. And he wants me to talk to him. And he wants to talk to me. And he wants me to be a willing part of his plan. To fulfill that plan. Did you ever read in Revelation 5 where they saw the image of a lamb as it had been slain before the foundation of the world what you mean the lamb wasn't slain in Jerusalem on Golgotha you mean the lamb was slain in the mind of God before the foundation of the world why because God wants to love and to be able to love and be loved in return, he had to create a being with the, the, the ability to choose, the right to choose, and the responsibility to choose. But here's the problem. For that being to be created, 
with the true ability to choose, God in his wisdom knew that man was going to make some bad choices. But because God's number one motive for all of this is love, before he ever even created man, he created a way where he could forgive man of the wrong choices and restore man's ability back to choose God instead of being doomed like Lucifer was to his wrong choices forever. And he did that before the foundation of the world. <laughs> he didn't plan for man to sin, but he gave man a choice because it's the only way love would work. But he loved us so much that when he gave us the ability to choose, he knew we would make wrong choices. But rather than just dis just eliminate us, just throw us out. He made the way to take care of our wrong choices and restore us in him back to the place he originally created us as forgiven and having the ability to choose to love him. My, 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 my. Woo! Itabaha sakoto tie kalaradata tatabaha. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He katahalaradata batatahaya. Why do you think the greatest commandment is? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And if you know who our God is, then you love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. That's the greatest commandment because that's his motive fulfilled for us. His motive for us fulfilled is to know who he is and to love him because that was the plan. That was the wisdom of God, the purpose of God, the counsel of God, the mystery of the will of God. Woo! <laughs> you know what you're feeling right now? The Shekinah glory. You know what the glory of God is? The glory of God is the self-manifestation and the self-revelation of God to man. That's when you see the word glory, glory of God, that's God revealing himself to man. That's God manifesting himself to man. That's what's happened in this room right now. We're experiencing the, the glory of God. We're experiencing the glory of God. The I am through the Logos is revealing himself to us. He's manifesting himself to us right now. He talalololo bokora ta baba ha. Woo! Ilo robo kusata ta 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 baba ha. My 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 my. He tutu boko sakata ta ha yalara ta ta ha. My. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus.
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Glory. 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 Woo! <laughs> ha. Ma 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 ta ta ma 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 ta ha ma da ta ma ma ha ta ha. Ila a ila la la ba ta ba ha ha sa ta ta ba ha ta ha. Ila no boku sa ka ta ta ha ya la ra ta 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 ha. Woo, woo, ha ha. He tahala la 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 There's revelation taking place in this room. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tia tabaka sakata tata haya. Ha ha. Woo! Ha ha ha. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ita baka saha tata baha. Ha 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 ha. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus name Jesus name Jesus name He tata lo 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 bukura ta 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 haya Ti e kolara ta ta ti e kalara ta 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 ha Ti e kolara lo lo bukura ta 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 ba haya Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.
Ephesians 1, 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints, which are Ephesus to, to the faithful in Christ Jesus. God be, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and or even from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated or predetermined us in under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself he did not violate your will he did not create you where you could not be saved or could not be lost ahead of time he predestinated the saved whoever they are the church is predestinated. Who's in the church is up to free will. But the church itself, the body of Christ, is predestinated in him. Uh, uh, predestinate us under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. He has a plan. To the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. <laughs> you, oh, my brothers and sisters, do you, you understand this? This isn't about what you do to earn anything. It's just being willing to humble yourself to receive the grace of God. Philippians 2.13, For it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I can't take credit for me being here tonight. I let him activate in me the desire to, to, to do that. And then he activated in me because I allowed him to the ability to do what I desire to do. Therefore, he gets all the glory. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. The Logos is the beloved. And, or Christ. And we are in Christ. Galatians 3.27 For as many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Are you ready? I came here in September 2009. And by the time I went home, I had, I had committed to come in late October to Indonesia and Malaysia and Singapore again. And by the time I got home from that trip, I was really just worn out. But I came home with a commitment to come back to this area in January and in March and in May. And I decided it was too much and I didn't want to do it. But I couldn't tell God no. So I determined I would change his mind. So I decided I wouldn't pray. You look at me like, I can't believe you're telling us this. I can't believe I wouldn't. So I, I decided I wasn't going to pray. And then he'd have to change his mind and say, you can't go. I don't want somebody like you representing me. So I went a whole month. And of course, if you don't pray, you struggle with stuff. So he hadn't said anything. He hadn't even tried to convict me of my struggles. He, had, he didn't do any of that. And I keep waiting for him to say, you aren't going. So finally, I couldn't stand it anymore. A whole month, I'm dying. And I said to him, well, I guess you're not going to send me now. He said, oh, yeah, I am. Well, don't you realize what I've just been doing? Duh. <laughs> I haven't prayed in a month. You can't send somebody like me. Oh, you're going all right. And you know those struggles of the flesh you have when you don't pray? 
Don't ever ask me to take them away again because I'm never going to take them out of your life. How could you do that? Because then when you go and you're going and I use you, you and I going to know you didn't do any of it because I know what you really are and you know who you really are. And so when I use you, no matter what anybody else thinks about you or what happened, you and I are going to know the truth, aren't we? And so I'm not really happy about that. So I said to him, am I the best you've got to do this? He said, you're going. So I said, if I'm the best you've got to go do this, you're hurting. He didn't change his mind. So, a year ago, I'm in California, and I'm preaching a meeting, and it, I, it's early in the morning, and I'm praying, seeking God for the day, and, and, uh, and I just, it just came on me again. Lord, th this, I, I'm not up to this responsibility. I'm, I'm not able to do this. I can't, be the, I can't be the best you've got for this. Surely you've got somebody better to do this. You know what he said to me? He said, what do you think I see when I look at you? He said, I'm not talking about what you see. I'm talking about what I see. He said, did I not clothe you in my righteousness? So when I look at you, I see my own righteousness. I don't see you. I see me covering you. And that makes you the best I got. My covering. My covering. Makes you the best I got. But I leave all that memory of struggle in you. I don't even know about it. Because I promised I'd forgive your sins and remember them no more. But I let you remember. Not so you won't let me use you. But so you will never take the glory. And he said, you're the best I got. Is anybody in this room clothed in his righteousness? You're the best he's got. You're the best he's got. But what about all my mistakes? He didn't know about them. He forgot them. He, when he forgave them, he forgot them. And then he clothed you with his own righteousness. So when he looks at you, what does he see? He sees his own righteousness. He sees himself. He's covered you with himself. That makes you the best he's got. <laughs> no, it's not this. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes you the best he's got. It doesn't matter the struggles. Those struggles are just to keep me saved. Those struggles are just to keep me reminded that I can't take the credit for any of this. I can't take the glory. It all belongs to Him. That anything good done in and through me is the grace of God at work. It's not me. Anything good about me is the grace of God. That's why Paul said, ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. Because He is your covering. He said, why do you think it is? That the Abraham I talked about in the book of Romans doesn't even sound like the Abraham that's written about in Genesis. He said, did I, did I make a mistake? Is there a lie or, or, or an inconsistency in the word? He said, no. I let the man be written about in Genesis. But I showed you what I saw when I looked at the man. 
in Romans. The guy that lied to protect himself and said his wife was his sister. We look at that guy and we go, well, he's pretty bad, dude. He's not very good, is he? But then the Lord says, who against hope believed in hope and was the father of many nations and didn't count his body dead, but he believed that what he had promised he was able to perform. Say, Lord, what's your problem? That's not the guy in Genesis. And the Lord said to me, the guy in Genesis is who you are inside my covering. But the guy in Romans is the guy that's covered because his faith was accounted as righteousness, which is the covering. He taught by my casata. The devil don't want you to get that. Because it's his only hope of neutralizing you in the kingdom of God. Your memories of your failures are not intended to prevent you from being used of God. They're just intended to remind you that the one doing the work is not you. And the one that gets the glory is not you either. That's why, even though you're saved, as long as you live on this earth till it's time to be raptured or die, your flesh is still flesh with all of its rottenness and all of its problems. Not to humiliate you, not to embarrass you, but to remind you who the covering is, who's done the forgiving, who's doing the work. And who gets all the credit and glory? So from this day forward, you don't ever stand up in front of a bunch of people and sing words that sound pretty. But out of the depth of your being comes a love and a thanksgiving that's expressed because of the one who's forgiven you and loved you. Yeah. Yeah, no more going through the motions. No, no, no. The hand of God's on your life. There's an anointing there. But it's got to be, it's got to be, there's got to be a thanksgiving. There's got to be glory given to God. How can people with this revelation come to church and go through the motions of singing songs they don't even mean? How's that possible? How's it possible for a man of God with this revelation to stand up in front of people preaching pretty sermons to try to impress people rather than being a conduit for this great God and our Savior to reveal Himself through us to the people that he's chosen in him before the foundation of the world. Woo! My. Woo! <laughs> yes! 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 (sighs) 
He ta ta ba ka ta ta la 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 ti e ka la 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 ta hai. That same glory that shines in the face of Jesus Christ is supposed to shine from the face of those who are a part of the body of Christ. The glory of God is supposed to shine from our face too. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He ta ta ba ha ta ta ba ba ha ta ha. Ephesians 1 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. You hear me right now? Hear me right now? Right now, I don't have the time to prove this, but you and I are the generation upon whom the ends of the world are come. And what does that mean? We are the generation that is the dispensation of the fullness of time. In whom also we have obtained inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Oh, Jesus, I don't know how to pay my rent this month. Oh, Jesus, I don't have food to eat. Oh, Jesus, don't you care, Jesus, because this is all I know to do to pray. Because I don't have a clue who you are or what I'm doing here or that you've got a plan and a purpose in all of this. And that's why I don't have to ask for what I'm going to eat and what I'm going to put on. And I don't have to pray for my needs. I'm just supposed to be a part of the kingdom. Verse 12, that we should be the praise of his glory. We first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted. After that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also ye had believed. Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest or down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. I wish I had time to spend some time on all this. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. What, a, what it was Paul the apostle praying to, for the church about. He didn't just pray for the church at Ephesus because this is a part of the eternal word of God. That means this prayer was prayed for the whole church in whatever generation and time period the, phrase, the church existed. What did he pray? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that the eyes, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Paul said, I'm praying you receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that your understanding would be opened and you would know these things. What did you pray for me to know, Paul? that you may know what is the hope of his calling. I don't believe in eternal security in the context in which it's preached. But you hear what I'm about to tell you right now. It's hard to be lost. Because the love of God's never going to give up on me. No matter how much I struggle, 
no matter what my problems are, until I convince him there's no hope, leave me alone. Struggling with the flesh is never God's problem. He will never give up on somebody that struggles with their flesh. It's when they let stuff get in their spirit. They come against the authority that God has put in their lives. They come against the revelation of the truth they once believed and participated in. It's hard to be lost because the Lord says judge nothing before the time and until you've reached your appointed death time it's appointed unto man wants to die and after that the judgment until you've reached that day his love's never going to give up on you. It's hard to be lost. Why? Because his motive for all of this was love love so many people listen to the lies of the devil oh it's hard to be a Christian it's hard to be saved there's no greater lie told to the people of God than that it's hard to be lost no matter how much I struggle no matter how much I have problems with myself and my flesh no matter what I fall into the love of God doesn't quit on me does that mean all of my problems are okay with God? No. It just means he's before the foundation of the world. In his mind, he already died on the cross. In his mind, before the foundation of the world to take care of all my faults and failures. They're not his problem. The, you know who's shocked at my sins? Not God. He doesn't go, oh, no. Look at what Joe Herod has done. Oh, God, I'm so, I, I don't know what to do. I, I'm so shocked. God's not shocked. He knows what flesh is capable of. You know who's shocked at our sins? We are. I, I'm, I can do that. I'm capable. One statement you should never make, I will never do that. <laughs> I'll never stoop that low. Hmm. So, first thing Paul prayed for us to know, that we would receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge and that, our, that, that the, our, the eyes of our understanding would be open, that we would know the hope of his calling. And that word hope in the Greek means confident expectation. So the hope of his calling is absolute confidence in his ability to save me. Oh, you ready? And what the riches of the glory of whose inheritance? Not my inheritance. Not my inheritance. Whose inheritance are you? His inheritance. You're his inheritance. You're his inheritance. He did all of this because he was going to get you out of it. You were what he wanted to get out of all this. You're his inheritance. Do you get that? <laughs> I wish I had the time to talk about that. I don't. So, next, next verse. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe? Well, how great is that power? Whew, Jesus. He tells me, he defines specifically how great that power is. That, the, that Paul prayed you'd receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge in, that your, the eyes of your understanding might be opened and enlightened so that you could know what is the exceeding greatness of his power 
to usward who believe. What is that power? Which he wrought or worked or manifested or demonstrated in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Well, that's not all that unusual. He raised a lot of people from the dead. Oh, but he didn't do this with those he raised, only with one. <sighs> and set him. at his own right hand in heavenly places. Now, what does that mean? Is there a big God sitting on the throne and a little Jesus sitting off on the right side? No. You know what that phrase right there means? The exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe is that he took Christ, allowed him to be crucified, buried, he raised him from the dead. But then he brought him up to heaven and set him on the throne of the universe as the visible representation of the I am God forever. Now, what, what does that have to do with us? We keep reading. Next place. Where did he set him? He set him far above all principality, power, might, dominion, and every name that is named. What does that next phrase say? Not only in this world. What does that mean? He's not talking about what's going to come after our die, we die. He's talking about the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe right now. Not only in this world, but the world is to come. In other words, what he's doing and willing to do and plan to do, purpose to do right now, is no different than what he's planning to do for eternity. And if you're looking for something different, you don't know what the Word of God says. Oh, but that's our problem, isn't it? We look at what is happening, or better yet, what isn't happening, and we think this is what it's going to be like for eternity. I tell you how to affect Singapore and wherever else you're from. Determine from now on, you're not going to be satisfied with coming together with the people of God and anything happening or not happening that's not representative of what's going to go on in heaven forever. We settle for this. When he's planned to give us this. Well, we just want enough move of God going on that somebody coming in here might get saved. Really? So what about those people down in those restaurants? You don't believe God can touch them while they sit down there and you're up here? What about the people walking by on the street? How about the ones driving by in their cars? You don't think that God's big enough to affect them and come on them? You ever heard of Azusa Street? They had so much God working there that people walking by on the sidewalk would fall down on their face, begin to weep and cry and repent because there was so much conviction in the area, not just those that came in the building. But we're just trying to get a little bit of something stirred up while we come together. Well, it just didn't happen today, so... I guess we'll wait till next week and hopefully we'll be able to find the right song to sing so that something happens. You know how grossly unfair it is to the praise team that they are under the pressure to find the right song to sing to finally get something moving in you when you ought to come in here with it all already moving. You know what the will of God is? For the man of God to have to get some kind of bell or signal 
because the noise of praise is so loud and so continuous that he has to ring a bell to get you to slow down so we, he can preach. Oh, brother, right. You mean people that have been chosen and blessed by God like we are have to be begged to praise You're kidding me, right? Surely that's not the case. Surely there ought to be a well of water, praise and thanksgiving and worship just bubbling up and flowing. Surely. So, that we might know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him in heavenly places. The right throne, right hand of God in heavenly places. Far above all principality, power, and might, dominion. They ever named his name. Not only in this world, but in that which is to come. Next verse. And gave him to be. What? What? Did he give you to be? The head of what? Over all things to who? Oh, wait, I missed a part, didn't I? Minor part, right? And hath put all things under his feet. Let's see. He's the head. Surely the feet are growing out of the side of the head, right? Because all things are under his feet. No. I look way down this body. If I can lean back far enough, I could see my feet. <laughs> and I find my feet on my body at the far end of my body from where my head is. And he's put all things under my feet, meaning there's no part of his body that he hasn't put above everything. Even the farthest part of his body from his head is Everything's put under his feet. And he has, he gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body that filleth all things. That filleth all in all, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth, filleth all in all, the fullness of him. He's not our fullness in this verse. We are his fullness. Is that not what it says? It says it in the Greek too. It says it stronger in the Greek. He's not our fullness, not in this verse. We are his fullness. The word full there means to make complete. Because the I am who is love created people in him before the foundation of the world. That would make him complete. And you think we're just here having church? And we're just praying religious prayers? I'm going, maybe, just kind of stay here for a little while. We might be done with the heaviest part of the teaching because something needs to happen here right now. If all things are under his feet in this world and he's put all that stuff under his feet which is us and he's the head over all things to the church is there really any such thing as spiritual warfare? Because it's not a fair fight. So, is the purpose of prayer to convince God to do something he doesn't want to do? Or has he already got a plan? And he's looking for people that will be his mouthpiece, his feet his hands in the earth 
to do what he's already purposed to do. He just needs somebody to be his conduit in the earth because the I am God cannot work in the earth without having a conduit to work through. And during the time the Logos made flesh and walked the earth, he was the conduit. But he only allowed him to stay here a few years and took him to heaven so that he became the head of the body that now represents that conduit. Because while he was on the earth physically, he was the Christ. Ooh, you ready? But now we are the Christ. Or at least the part of the Christ that's still on the earth because the head is already in heaven. The head has already overcome all things. These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you're going to have trouble, but don't be full of fear. Don't be discouraged, depressed. Be of good cheer. I've already conquered the world. And I am your head, and you are my body. And I'm the head over all things for you. And I'm already there. I can't lose. I've already won. And you're my body. And as your head, I'm already there. And I'm the conduit for all spiritual blessings that's already been granted to us. If you would just believe and receive them. Because you're mine. And I'm yours. And we are the culmination of God's plan in the earth. So why do we need to pray? That's what the next four sessions are about. That's why, as I said yesterday, we don't know how to pray. Because we don't even understand what prayer is for. We don't understand what prayer is for. Prayer is not a bunch of God's little orphan kids little homeless orphan kids that don't know where their next meal's coming from. Oh, God, don't you care about us? Uh, are you kidding me? When are we going to start praying like the body whose head is already in heaven? I said to the precious folks at the part of Joy Fellowship on Sunday, and some of you are here from that, and you need to encourage everybody else to hear this because what the Holy Ghost challenged them to do was to pray in their place of employment. And change the spiritual atmosphere. Because they're not lowly servants or help in homes or on jobs. They are members of the body of Christ. Whose head is already sitting on the throne of heaven. And we are his mouthpiece. We are his hands. We are his feet. We are his conduit for all of his power and all of his authority to be released into the earth. That's who we are. When are we going to start praying like who we are? When are we going to start praying like who we are? When? When is that going to happen? It is irrelevant what 
the Father, for his own purposes, allows the government to do for this building. You're not subject to them. Your head is far above all principality, power, might, dominion, and ever named its name. But the devil wants you to get so weighted down with all this pressure. And, oh, what's going to happen to us? We're at their mercy. What are they going to do? No, they're at God's mercy, whether they know it or not. what our problem is we don't act like we believe that we don't pray like we believe that we don't but we can and in Jesus name we will Amen. how many of you are sitting here tonight with family members you love that won't give you an opportunity to say one thing to them about the Jesus you serve. <laughs> I was in Pakistan in 2012, and uh, <laughs> I was preaching in one of the main churches. I won't say the city or whatever, and. Uh, we had a great service, and most of everybody had gone, and I was still standing there with the missionary and the pastor of this church. And this, the back door opened, and this elderly man, older man, he wasn't elderly. Elderly's got to be like 90, right? You're not elderly till you're at least 90. <laughs> or older, right? This, this older man and his wife came through the back door, and you could tell he was hurting. And he came up to the front, and the pastor knew him. The pastor said, this is the head imam or iman, iman, iman or mom, the, the head imam of this city. And he had a dream. And in this dream, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am God. And he sought me out. And I baptized him in Jesus' name. But he hasn't, he's a believer in secret right now. Because the moment they found out, find out he's baptized, they'll kill him but he hasn't received the Holy Ghost yet. He came that day because he was sick. And he'd been to the doctors and they couldn't help him. So I said to the missionary and the pastor, let's pray for him. We began to pray and what you're feeling right this second moved in that place, came upon him. And the first thing that happened was he was instantly healed. The second thing that happened was he raised his hands, began talking in tongues. Do you have any idea how many of those folks that believe in his religion are having dreams of a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ as God? Don't tell me what can't happen. Tell me what the body of Christ whose head's already on the throne can do in prayer to see things change. When are we going to start stop begging God to do this and that and start praying like the body whose head has already won the victory and is in heaven waiting for people who are willing to speak the word of authority, the word of power, the word of the love of God into this earth. 
When are we going to pray like the body of Christ instead of a bunch of orphaned, homeless kids that God's forgot about? Is anything hard for God? Come on. Come on. Let the spirit of revelation, the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him come upon you now in Jesus' name. That the eyes of your understanding would be opened. That you might see. That you might receive the revelation. And the faith that goes with that revelation of who He is and who you are in Him. That by and through that revelation, you might be His conduit of prayer to speak that authority He has sitting on the throne of heaven into the earth that souls might be saved. Speak it in your language. And also pray it in tongues. Don't just pray in tongues. Don't just pray it in your language. But speak things in your language. And pray in tongues also. Speak it. Speak it. That's why Jesus said, The keys of the kingdom. It's whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Because of who you are, you're the body of Christ. He's put all things under your feet. He's the head over all things to the church. But the word has to be spoken and released into the atmosphere of this earth so that word can come to pass. Come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My, 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 my. Ha, ha, ha. Woo! Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The devil loves a still tongue. The devil loves a closed mouth. The devil loves a closed spirit. You can't meditate the power of God into manifestation of the earth. You can't meditate the authority of God to take dominion in the earth. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. The Lord gave you His power, the power to speak. Let there be. Let there be. In the name of Jesus. Loose the spirit of the love of God into your parents' home. Loose the spirit of the love of God into your siblings, brothers and sisters' houses. Loose the spirit of the love of God into your school, in your place of employment, into your neighborhood. 
Bind the spirit of darkness. Bind the spirit of blindness. Come on. You're the body of Christ. Pray like it. You're the body of Christ. Speak like it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. Wake up, church. Wake up, body of Christ. Rise up in us, Holy Ghost. Rise up in us, faith. Rise up in us, authority and power of God. Rise up in us, word of God. Wake up, body of Christ. Rise up, body of Christ. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Uh. Body of Christ. Pray like your head is sitting on the throne of the universe right now. Body of Christ, pray like your head is already sitting on the throne of the universe right now. <laughs> 